Hello, boys and girls. Perlo is the mirror from BPOW Picks. And uh, you'll know me from all the wonderful, fabulous trade videos that I've been doing. Uh, it's my favorite thing in the land to do. Or you might know me as one of the finest NHL handicappers in the land. Yeah. You know what that is? Like, I give people bets, and then they make money. I tell them who's going to win. What the score is going to be, all those sort of things like that. They pay me for those things. If you like to do that sort of thing, I'll tell ya, I got lots of clients that make lots of money doing it. BPALPICS.com, check it out. Anyways, Tarasenko. We're going to be looking at Tarasenko today. We did Bo Horvat, and before I could even get it out on all the land, they traded him. You could have waited like a week so I could at least talk to Bo with all the other teams. We had the Islanders on there. Um, I didn't have them as high. Because I thought for sure they were going to look for defense. Now, what happened in that? Uh, I'll go quickly on that, Bo Horvat. I think what happened was, is they asked Horvat where he wanted to go, and the Islanders were it. They were taking care of him a little bit. You say, well, why would they take care of him? Perlo, why would they do that? Well, because if you don't treat players well, you don't get free agents. And it's hard to sign players. You won't get deals on a hometown discount if they're like, you treated Bo like crap. Why the heck would I want to sign long term with you? You see what I'm saying? So the better you treat players, the better it is in the long term. Um, you, the return was underwhelming, I guess, to a lot of people. I thought it wasn't bad considering probably that. Anyways, let's look at Tarasenko. Um, I'm going to look at an article that happened from 2021, actually. I don't think I need to put an article out there showing you a rumor that he might be traded. It's pretty known everywhere that it's very likely Tarasenko might be, will be traded. O'Reilly may be less, but I think as well. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is he asked for a trade like a long time ago. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but uh, we're going to look at that. And then we're going to look at St. Louis Blues and what they may need and what's going on with that. Uh, and we are going to look at seven teams, I believe it is where he may go, where he may fit, and may have been, may have be able to work something out here. Uh, contract, all that stuff like that, how old he is, all that. We're going to look at all of that. All right? All right, let's get at her. That's not the right thing. <laughs> I do this one take. That's right, I forgot to tell you this. No editing, one take. So, there. Because I don't have time for all that editing. I mean, nobody got time for that. All right. Tarasenko asked Blues for trade. Do you remember this? This was back in 2021. And uh, uh, sources that the 20-year-old has asked to move earlier in the offseason. And general manager Doug Armstrong is currently trying to work out a deal. Well, they never worked out a deal, now, did they? It's, he's still there. He's been there a long time. He's been real, uh, very patient. And the reason for it came out after that, I'll go a little further here. It came out after that. I'm not going to pull out all the articles. I don't work that hard. Dude, I got to get 14 naps in a day. I think I'm going to just scour the whole land looking for every single article. No, not going to. But you might remember that he had problems with the medical staff in St. Louis and medical something. That happened and with the shoulder. Uh, much the same, it seemed like, with Eichel with his problem, where he just, uh, they had an argument about how to go about it, and he wasn't very happy about it. And uh, apparently there was talk that they didn't think he was as hurt as he was. And that, that really probably would piss somebody off. So He's held on. He hasn't really pushed the envelope on that. And from all accounts, from what I understand, Tarasenko is a great guy. He's not a guy that's going to go bitching about anything. Um, so we'll look at Tarasenko and what happened. Now, there's another article, and I remember I read it succinctly. And it was more than one article, actually. Where Tarasenko, he has... Okay, let's go look at this. Let's go this way. Vladimir Tarasenko, he has a no-trade clause, as you can tell here. Apparently, he even said he'll give them five to seven teams he'd go to. And uh, 
So I don't know if any of the teams that I have here on the list, I can't possibly know that. But we're going to look at teams that probably would be interested. And since we have Tarasenko here, he's making $7.5 million a year. Almost for sure the Blues will have to retain 50%. So you're going to be looking at $3,250,000 just to get that added value because if there are only five teams he's willing to go to, of those teams, there might be, you know, there might be a pretty good chance that they don't want him. So um, when we look at these teams, I'm kind of going to talk about maybe we're trying to get in his head based on who he is. Uh, one thing for sure, you won't be going to any rebuilding team or anything like that. It's going to be a contender. I can pretty, I'm pretty sure of that. So, seven and a half million. Uh, he's still a point producer, all the hell. I mean, after his injury issues that he had, uh, he didn't really skip much of a beat over a point a game. He's down a little bit this year, but so is everybody in St. Louis land this year. It's just horrible there. And that's the other reason why I'm positive he gets moved. And I really think it's part of the problem with St. Louis, to tell you the honest truth. They have O'Reilly and Tarasenko, who they really don't even sound like they're talking contract with. And they signed a bunch of their young players. I mean, the writing is kind of on the wall that they are going a different direction. And St. Louis is not known for signing long-term contracts with older players. They didn't do it with Peter Angelo, if you remember. Peter Angelo, their captain. They wouldn't even do it with him. Uh, Shattenkirk, who else? Like The list goes on. They just don't. Instead of doing Peter Angelo, they took younger players in Krug and Falk and gave them long-term contracts. So it's part of their philosophy, and they just won't do it. And Tarasenko's 33 years old. I'm sure he's going to be looking for a contract until he's at least 37. All right, St. Louis, what are they going to need in this deal? I mean, I, ju I just mentioned that they signed Tara, uh, Th Robert Thomas and Kyra to about the same amount of money, $8 million a year for quite a while. And they're young, but like everybody else in the league, and, I, and, I, and this is a reason actually more well, the reason why I had St. Louis out of the playoffs this year. I did choose St. I did feel that St. Louis was going to miss the playoffs this year. Now, before you go going, wow, good for you, uh, I, I, I said they were going to miss the playoffs last year, and I was wrong. But I stuck with it because I don't see how this defense gets in the playoffs. Nick Letty, I still don't understand. Tell, somebody tell me out there what the heck Nick Letty is doing at $4 million a year. That guy is a $1 million defenseman at best. Terrible defensively. I don't know. I get into it. I don't understand what they did there. But um, Colton Pareko is having a bad year. Krug and Falk are serviceable, but, you know, not, not spectacular. Um, I really like the way Rosen is progressing, actually. Um, but they could use they could use uh, some youth in their in their in their um, development program. They they need some young players. The prospects are starting to wear thin. They've tried to do uh, as best as they can drafting, keeping their first round draft picks. And you got to appreciate what they've done with that. They've done well getting guys like Thomas and Cairo and Pareko, who's are not Pareko, uh, Perunovic who, for the love of God, please be okay, dude. My gosh, two serious injuries right bang, bang at only 24 years old. Treat to watch. I, I really hope he's able to continue his career and do well in this league because uh, he's a great talent. Um, but, you know, Jake Neighbors is another one who's a nice pickup, Alexandrov. So there are some players coming up that are that are pretty good, but, there isn't tons for a team that looks like they're getting older and they need to kind of retool. And I do think this will be a retool. I St. Louis, to me, has given nothing but to show that they are looking to make it in the playoffs every year and see what they can do. They just, and I don't blame an owner for wanting that. They have those demands. Uh, you've got sponsors, you've got, uh, you know, they pay the bills. And if you're missing the playoffs, 
sponsors go away, and the bills aren't getting paid. So, and I think they've done a pretty good job of it. Won a cup doing it. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to trade Tarasenko, they're going to trade O'Reilly, and then they're going to go to the free agent pool, and they're going to try to build this team the same way they've been building it all the way up until now. I don't think this is going to be a teardown, scorch rebuild, but I do think we're going to see a rebuild. Okay, so everybody's looking for defensemen. If you can get one, great. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I'll tell you that right now. Who, me? Like I'm telling you? Okay, whatever. I'm going to say that when I do these things, defensemen are tough to find. And a lot of teams need defense. If I was drafting, which is highly unlikely to ever happen, <laughs> if I were to, I would take a defenseman over a forward almost all the time, unless the forward is way better. It's just there's no defenseman out there. The value for a defenseman right now is insane. All right, let's start with Washington. I don't even know why I have this first. I had a really tough time figuring who's the least likely, most likely, stuff like that. But one of the reasons why I have Washington in here, and yes, I know they have cap issues, and there was going to have to be a situation happen here where uh, money will go back, no doubt about it. And the more I think about it, I think I should have them higher. Because I think the Russian factor is something that Tarasenko would have them not on the list. I think Washington would be on his list. Who wouldn't want to play if you're Russian with Ovechkin and uh, Orlov and Kuznetsov? And, you know, it's there's a great Russian factor there. Um, also, it's a team that is, I mean, you can skew it as a contender. It's certainly not going to be rebuilding. There's, there's no way. As long as Ovechkin's there, they're going to keep on beating this drum until it's dead. And uh, Tarasenko. Would definitely you put Tarasenko on that right side with uh, Strom and Ovechkin, and that looks pretty sweet, dude. Pretty sweet with the power play with Kuznetsov, just this the whole Russian line thing. I mean, there's so many angles that this that uh, the PR people in Washington would be having the giggles, and it would be a great move. Uh, in the situation that Washington's in, I think most people that watch Washington, even fans believe that they really should rebuild and not be beating the same drum. But since they are, this might be one fantastic way to go. If they were to have a chance to do anything. Now, what would go back? This is why I think I think this deal should be higher on the list now, the more I think about it. Um, I think Anthony Mantha goes in this deal. One more team to give him a shot to become whatever he's going to become. He's big. He's got a... Great package. Um, he, he's on a short-term deal, so you can also always work out a deal after this. If he only is a 40-point player or a 45-point player at, at uh, 6'5", 234, it's not horrible, right? Um, like I said, the leverage for St. Louis is not going to be good here. There's probably only going to be five teams. It might come down to only one team that will do it. So... I think Mantha would be part of the deal. I think a first. I I think they could get away with the 2024 first, not the 2023. Nobody wants to trade those 2023s. Do they even have that? I should probably check to see if they have that. And you wouldn't. They wouldn't have to retain any money doing the, this deal, actually. So, um, Washington's even getting a little bit of cap space. So that's that's a benefit as well um, for Washington. That is, yeah, 2020. Since they're getting cap space, you might be able to squeak out that 2023 and Mantha. Maybe a prospect, maybe. But I mean, I wouldn't think it would be a top top prospect. I just don't think they have that. St. Louis is going to have the leverage to get those kind of top prospects and a first and you know a player and all of that i i just don't see it but if they do they do i would take a little stab at uh, hunter shepherd here 27 year old goaltender he's had a great year this year uh washington pretty much they have their backup they have their 
you know, it's always good to have a third string, but it's not hard to find. And uh, I would take a peek at him. I, he's put up some really good numbers in the AHL. It looks like he's just one of those late blooming goaltenders. And with Grice getting long in tooth, I mean, he may be your backup for the future. I think that would be a, wouldn't a bad, be a bad deal. Okay, Washington Capitals fans, subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know what you think about that. And St. Louis fans as well. Uh, Dallas Stars. Now, I've heard this from several sources that Dallas is looking to, to looking this year, if they can, to add to their top six. I don't know if this big of a splash would be something that they would be looking at, but I think it's possible, and if they could, they would. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, Tarasenko is a right-hander. Uh, they're going to retain half. And here's the thing. They have somebody named Denis Gurianov, who I think really needs a chance somewhere else. He just He's got tons of speed. He looks like a late bloomer type of guy. He doesn't add huge value to this deal, but you got to remember Tarasenko's only got like a five-team list in, that he's willing to go to. And he actually has a no-trade clause, so he himself, I heard, has said that he's willing to offer five teams so they have a little bit of leverage to bring something back. Um, regardless, he's going to have to choose. The thing about Dallas is it's still in the West. The bad thing about Dallas is St. Louis might not want to trade Tarasenko within the division. However, getting him in this, in this, uh, getting him here now might be just a pure rental. For, I've also heard that he wants to go on the market. He doesn't care where he goes. He's still going to check out the market. So, Denis Gurianov. I don't think you got to give up the 2023 first, 2024 first, protected. And, I mean, if he's just a rental and there's no leverage, that might be all it takes to get him. I do think that they would, they are, they're going to be demanding a first. Uh, well, you said how much, they don't have any leverage he's got to go to. Well, Tarasenko really wants to go. I'm pretty positive he wants to go now. Why would you want to be in St. Louis any longer than you are right now? Get your life going somewhere else. So I am, they do have some leverage in the sense that, and St. Louis has shown this, that they're not really player friendly. <laughs> uh, they're going to take their leverage. And if they could say, you know what, if, we're not, if you're not going to give us anything, I'm not taking care of you guys. Screw you. We'll just lose. We won't get nothing in return. As long as you get screwed and you don't get Tarasenko. You see what I'm saying? That's the leverage they have. So I do think it could be that. Uh, 2024 first. Or maybe, you know, um, Matai Blumel. Excuse me if you don't say it that way, but I saw him up at the big club there for a while and he looked pretty good. He's 22 years old. He didn't look like he was doing too bad up there. He's got 29 points in 32 games. I personally don't think I would go that direction. I would go with the first. Dallas needs to win in the next little while here. The 2024 first isn't going to be ready for quite a while. And Blue Mel could be taking the spot next year. So um, Thomas Harley is another one that I would like as well to look at. You know, I, I, But it's going to be one of these guys in the first. That's it. I believe that's all they're going to get. So... Dallas Stars fans, would you do something like that to get Tarasenko? I mean, I didn't even talk about it. You get Tarasenko, put Sagan in the middle again, let him play center again. And who do they have hurt? Nobody. Really, who's normally the second line center? It's not Fox. I guess Wyatt Johnson or... Come, I feel like I'm missing somebody here. Uh, anyways, Sagan goes in the middle, Tarasenko, Sagan, and Marchmont. Pretty solid second. Pretty solid. One of the best first lines in the game. And defense is fairly solid. But my, what has happened to Well, he's 38 years old. But Ryan Suter is not having a good year this year. I listened to the chat in Dallas. And oh my gosh. <laughs> they are not happy with him. However, I think that puts you in a pretty good contention. 
to be able to take out Colorado and maybe get yourself into a cup final. Tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Okay, subscribe to my channel, YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube channel, search Perlo, Perlo Wisdom NHL, and you will find me. Because if you try to do it, if I have it on Facebook and you try to subscribe, it won't let you, which I think is stupid. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. All right, Rangers, this is just simply because they are so rumored. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's New York. So a lot of the noise comes out quite a bit in New York. Huge hockey fans, huge population, and a huge fan base that they know they need a right winger. The question is, what the hell is going to go back here? Do I think Tarasenko would be willing to go to New York? Almost all the players are willing to go to New York, right? So um, is are the Rangers a team that wants to go to get a rental? Or, you know, I'm sure St. Louis will let them, let him uh, negotiate a contract, but the Rangers have cap problems down the road. All of these teams do. It, it it's possible that any one of those teams could sign him, I guess, if they move some stuff around. But for the Rangers in particular, they have a lot of players coming up. Philip Hedl, of course, Lafreniere, Kratzoff, not so big of a deal. Uh, Keandre Miller, I mean, yeah, they've got, what, $16 million in cap space and they got to sign all those. How are you going to get Tarasenko under there? Something's going to have to be done. But for a stretch drive, and like I said, St. Louis doesn't have much leverage. If you want to go for it this year, it could possibly happen. St. Louis will retain three and a half million, three and a quarter, I guess. So it's three and a three and a quarter. And dude, why didn't I look at what the Rangers have for cap space right now? Oh, they have cap space. Jeez. Perfect. Remember, I do this all off the top of my head. There's no editing. I don't. I just go fly right off the top of my head. So you don't need cap space. Who the heck is going to go back? I think they need. I mean, you don't want any roster players going back, and there's no way it's Lafreniere. No way. No way. I hear. I've heard it over and over again. The guy's only 21 years old. He put up 22 points in 48 games. I think they may end up, and I've talked about this, I think they may end up having to trade him because he's not, he doesn't seem to go well on the right side, which is what they need. But I don't see it happening with this deal. Um, I think you get way more value from Lafreniere than getting a rental like this. And you want to have all the players you can have on your roster if you can. So just put Tarasenko on the right side as a bonnet job in Panarin. I think Panarin and Tarasenko might want to play with his countrymen up there. I think so. And uh, pony up the 2024 first, trying not to use the 2023. And um, you got some defensemen there, and they need defensemen. Zachary Jones, Matthew Robertson. Um, I, I hear a lot of people that are not big on Zach Jones. You know why? Because the Rangers, in Rangers land, they don't like small players, small defensemen. Problem is, St. Louis has a lot of small defensemen as well. Um, I think they would be looking, either one of those guys, Matthew Robertson, Zach Jones, in the 2024 first, just might get it done. That alone might get it done. Also, possibly up uh, by Tally Kratzoff. That little deal. Kratzoff, 2024 protected first. And Matthew Robertson. I think that could get it done. I think the Rangers will do that since they have the cap room. Why not? Yeah, he's a rental. But that's worth a rental, I think. What do you think, Rangers fans? Nice addition to the lineup. He can play five on five. What a concept. Nobody on this team can play five on five well. Well, the young players actually do better than the older players. But uh, picking up Vincent Trocek was interesting because he's not really great five on five. It's almost like the Rangers don't even understand that they have a five-on-five -five problem because they have never did anything to get better in that area. Um, their defensemen are good, but forwards, nay. All right, Rangers fans, would you do it?
Tarasenko. Whee! That would be one powerful line. Pucks flying everywhere. Panarin passing to Zabonijad and Tarasenko. That would be cray cray. Uh, yeah. Okay. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know. Carolina Hurricane. And I actually probably should have this lower. But I like the Svechnikov Tarasenko thing. And the thing I do like about this is they might be able to work out a contract with Tarasenko afterwards. They do have some cap space. Um, but the depth that they would have on the right side in this deal would be absolutely freaking insane. If Tarasenko was willing to take a three, four year deal, and you've got Svechnikov, Kokaniemi, or whoever they decide to get for a second line center. That's kind of the reason why I have them think I should have them lower is I really think they're going to want a center more than anything here. Um, that's going to be their Achilles heel going into the playoffs. But if a center is not to be had, getting somebody like Tarasenko to help out in uh, help out Svechnikov, I think would not be a bad idea. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Uh, in the off season, Jordan Stahl is not going to be making six million dollars his next contract. Jesper Foss is probably going to make about that. Paul Stastny, you don't even need to sign him. You got young players that can take his spot. So, what kind of cap space are they going to have? Twenty-nine million in cap space. Really? Who do you got to sign? Really? Marty Nietzsche is the next year after that. But honestly, they could re-sign him if he likes the idea of going to Carolina. I don't know if he does or not. Apparently, he's got five teams that he's willing to go to. Uh, or they, they're going to have to sign some goaltenders and stuff like that, but they could do it. And I think with Max Pacioretty looking like his year is over, they went out and got Max Pacioretty, who is a winner. So why the heck wouldn't they go for a guy like Tarasenko, especially if uh, he's willing to sign? You know, I think it's a very good chance that they do that. And this deal, 2024 first, I... Uh, Leverage is difficult here, Carolina fans. Uh, if there's more than one team going, you might end up even after to you put your 2023 first. But he apparently has five teams he's willing to go to. I have no idea if Carolina is one of them. But I don't. if I were him, I'd be all over going to Carolina, playing with my countrymen, and it's a beautiful place. and um, Great fans, great everything there. Like I, I would be into it, but I guess it doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> um, but I think Tarasenko would have to be part of the deal. Or, sorry, Tarasenko. I think uh, a first-round pick in 2024 is what I'm trying to say would have to be part of the deal. And maybe like a Jack Drury, who's kind of, I don't know, going on there. He looks like he's going to be like a third-line center and stuff, sort of something like that. But he's he's a... He's a gamer, man. It's just his offense isn't really progressing all that much down in. 11 points in 21 games is not spectacular. When he's been up, he plays hard. Like He looks like he's going to be a defensive center type. So the 2024 first, Jack Drury, and maybe like on Tony Honka, who has been percolating there in Finland for quite some time. How's he doing? 19 points in 38. Oh, he's in the AHL now. So, you know, he's probably got a couple of years yet. He's one of those guys, but he could be a defenseman that works for St. Louis. Uh, and they need young defensemen. So uh, something like that. 2024 first. Um, if, like I said, if there are other teams like really wanting Tarasenko of the five that he's willing to do, this could even get a, a little more than this. You could be looking at a 2023 first. Uh, Dylan Coughlin, like it can it can start getting expensive if that happens. I'm doing this based on the fact that they probably won't have a lot of leverage. So there you go, Carolina fans. Tarasenko on the right side, man. Woo! Now if St. Louis plans are like, we want Seth Jarvis. You ain't getting Seth Jarvis. Like, forget about it. If it if they said, "Oh, we want Seth Jarvis or nothing," the the they wouldn't have heard, wouldn't hear another peep on the other side of the line after that. 
Carolina would be like, okay, we're out. No way you're getting Seth Jarvis. No way you're getting Marty Nietzsche's. Forget about it. It's not happening. Okay, Carolina fans, subscribe to my channel, on my YouTube channel, Perlow's NHL. Uh, Perlow's NHL. Search that because you're going to have to search it to find it. Or just subscribe if you're listening to me on YouTube right now. Okay, Nashville. And here is where it could get interesting. The question is, for Tarasenko, is Nashville going to be on on his list? And because Nashville really is in the playoff spot right now. However, the big bonus to going to Nashville, if he would put it on the list, is that he would be a number one center. I'm sure they would sign him long term. Like, Nashville... If they can get players, they get them, and they take care of them, and they pay them because it's a smaller market, and it's uh, they cannot really rebuild. It's a very tough market to raise up to get uh, players like it's a, it to uh, manage. It's a very tough market to manage. They can't afford to do a sh- like seven, eight year rebuild here where they're where they're not winning for a long period of time. Well, apparently last year in the playoffs, there were empty seats. Like, this team needs to be in the mix. So for Tarasenko, you say, well, why would he want to go to Nashville? Well, first of all, he's already got a cup. Second of all, Nashville's actually a really cool city. It's, like, really cool. I don't know what he thinks it is, but do you want to be a superstar? Yet you can still walk around the streets and people don't really know who you are? Like you get, he he would probably get his max dollar here if he were to go here. He could help them make the playoffs this year. And honestly, they're only one number one center away from being possibly really, 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 really good. And they've got Juicy Soros there. They got another uh, what's that defenseman coming up? It's going to be insane. Apparently, Yaroslav Askarov is coming up. There's a lot of good things coming up in Nashville. Um, I have them high on the list because I think that they will be trying hard to get them. And I think St. Louis would get our best value from them. I think if they were in there, Carol- they would outbid Carolina. And this could get expensive. The, if he is wanting to go to Nashville and Carolina, if he's willing to do both, this could get expensive as far as assets are concerned. Um, I think the 2023 first would have to be part of in play here, uh, protected like top 15 or something like that, and then it becomes a 2024, sort of what the Islanders did with Horvat. Um, and since you're trading a winger, you know, they're not going to want to tra- tra- trade anybody off the roster because they want to have as many bullets as they can to take out the Colorados of the world. In the playoffs, so you could get Dante Fabro and give him a shot, though. St. Louis has been really good at uh, uh, developing defensemen. Not very good at signing free agent defensemen, but good at developing. It's the weirdest team in the world. They got a great draft and development team, and really, as far as I'm concerned, a poor management team. Whoever is doing the drafting and developing, I think they should manage the freaking team. But anyways, give Dante Fabro a shot. The 2024 first, I know I said that they wouldn't want to take off any roster players, but he was already on the block. He's been, it just hasn't been working out in Nashville. So I think that they would be open to uh, offering him up and maybe a prospect as well, like Philip Tomasino. I still can't understand for the life of me why that kid got sent down. I don't know. You know, it's possible if there's not enough leverage, Tomasino and the first would definitely be enough. I think that would be enough. I would be all over that. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. Let me know in the comment section. And uh, if you like that deal. All right, next, Pittsburgh Penguins. And I think the Pittsburgh Penguins will be all over this if they can find a way to do it. They got to retain money. Yes, there is a cap space issue. There's no doubt about that. They would retain half. Let's see how much cap space they have. Um, they're going for it. 
Uh, how are you not going for it if you're Pittsburgh? There is no doubt about the fact that they're going for it. How many? They got two million in cap space. They only need to free up a million, a million or so. So I mean, I think if they get in the mix, if he's willing to go there, who doesn't want to play with Crosby, right? Uh who, who, Malkin, Evgeny Malkin, your countryman, get to play with a legend. I, I just can't see him, this team, not being on his list. That's why I have it really high here. Um, and they got to go for it. And if you go get Tarasenko, you're certainly going for it. I, I think Pittsburgh, if it, if there was any bidding war, they would give up their 2023 in this deal. And that might be the breaking point. If they get, if, because uh, because they're, you know, sort of in the middle right now, they're they're just barely holding on to a playoff spot. Now, if I think if they got Tarasenko, that would change. Uh, it would probably be have to be lottery protected, but this 2023 draft is insane. That alone may do it. They could throw Kisperi Kapanen in, in there for one more team to give the guy a shot. I guess he's got commitment issues or something like that, but St. Louis could work with that. Um, but I think the 2023 first would tip into their favor. Possibly Danton Heinen. He's a good, solid player. I mean, he's a good throw-in, he, good throw-in player. St. Louis can use him for now. Uh, he can play all over your lineup. I like the guy. I think he's a good NHLer. He's only 27 years old. Something like that. And you can have Tarasenko with Crosby and Gunsel. Would that not be fun to watch? Especially in the playoffs. That would be amazing. Either that or Tarasenko with... Uh, with Malkin playing with his Russian counterpart, tell him, come over here, you get to play with your legend. You know, the legend, Malkin. Tell me Tarasenko won't want to do that? I I think he might. Now, as far as signing him after that, Zucker, you don't need to sign him. Raquel goes over here. Offer him up six and a half. See if he'll take that kind of money, like same kind of money as Evgeny Malkin for a long term. You got a pretty solid lineup again next year, man. What do you think, Pittsburgh Penguins fans? Tarasenko to Pittsburgh. I was going to have the Islanders on this list. I'll just tell you that right now. But after getting Horvat, I just, just, I just can't see any way where it's possible. So I took him off. Next, New Jersey Devils. And this has been the biggest... Uh, well, no, yeah, tied for the biggest rumors that I have heard Tarasenko going to. Um, and in this case, I don't think he would be a rental either. This is a team that wants to get good now. And they've got a lot of good young players already. They could use veterans. Um you know, Thomas Tatar doesn't have to be signed after this year. So there's four and a half million they could use to sign Tarasenko after this. Um, but they are going to have to sign Jesper Bratt, who's going to get a lot of money. That being said, I think they can work it out one way or another to even get him signed after this year, as long as he wants to go to New Jersey. Why would he want to go to New Jersey? Why would he have New Jersey on the list? Well, they're an up-and-coming team that are probably going to be contenders for the next four or five years. You get to play with great young kids and some veterans too. You get to be a leader. I mean, if he embraces that role, there's a look at all the people coming off the books. Tatar, I think they'll sign Wood. You don't want to lose him. But Eric Hall is not necessarily at 2.3. There's lots of team players coming. Severson can be replaced by some of those young players. They could definitely re-sign him after this. And he has won a cup. So you're bringing a cup, another cup with Palat into this young room going forward. You got Palat, he's your brat. Uh, now, okay, well, you got to have a return. I think Fabian Zuderlin is developing very, very well. And I think St. Louis would be happy to have a player like that. Uh, 2024 first. 
Fabian Zuderlin, uh, depending on how many people are, how many of the other teams, and possibly a prospect to go back like Nikita Ahadiak, because they have so many defensemen coming up. My gosh. You're not getting damage. Forget about it. It's not happening. No way are you get Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. It's not happening. Maybe Makamadoulin. Possibly. Uh, which I would, I mean, big six foot four defensive defenseman. Might be something that interests you out there in St. Louis land. But I think they could get this done. Zuerlin goes back. And you've still got Mercer playing with Holland and Tatar. And you've got Tarasenko playing with Jack Hughes. Woo! My gosh, man. <laughs> Hughes and Tarasenko. That would be insane. Um, I don't know if he's going to have New Jersey on the list. I don't know why he wouldn't. But if they are... I think New Jersey is going to be interested in this. And I don't think they're going to mind giving up their 2024 first. Maybe even their 2023 if it got to that. And that's what St. Louis is going to be looking for. So, finally, I'm going to the team that is on the tip of everybody's tongues out in the land. The Boston Bruins. I mean, you're going to go for it, you're going to go for it. Simple as that. Do they have, they, they probably don't have any cap space, but we'll work out a deal here. Uh, 2.3 million. Either, St. Louis is going to have to retain. That's going to be 3 point some million right there. So you got to get rid of a million. I think we can manage that in a deal. And do I think they're going to want to do something like this? Yeah, absolutely. Put Zaka over on the left, back on the left hand side. With David Krejci and Tarasenkov as your second freaking line, dude. My gosh. And you can keep the Marshawn Bergeron Pasternak line together. Then Hall goes with Coyle and Smith. I mean, depth, forward depth for days. Days and days. In this deal, though, uh, I think. I think they would have to give up their 2023 and a prospect. Juna Kapanen has come up a little bit. Um, but the 2023 is of such huge value that – Troy, why not Mike Riley? The guy's been sitting there. His Analytically, Mike Riley's a really good defenseman. It shows you how much depth they have on their defense. But actually, I think he's better than Brandon Carlo, but – People are going to agree with me because Carlo is big. But his overall game is actually better. And St. Louis could use some defensemen. You might as well take a shot at him and see what he can become in St. Louis. Uh, just basically as a throw-in with the 2023 first and like Jacob Luco or something like that. You're like, I, I have a feeling St. Louis fans are going to be crying right now because they're like, we got to get more than that. I don't think you're going to. If you do, if they do get more, if they do get great value off of Tarasenko, all freaking awesome. But when a player is only giving up, like, you know, has a no trade clause and they can basically go wherever they want to go, it's usually pretty hard to get any decent value. What I'm, what I'm offering here is, is decent value in that scenario. Okay, boys and girls, that's my full 42. Watch out for my future trade videos. Let me know in the comment section who you would like to see traded. What rumored player out there would you like to see me do? I just did the Melka. That was a cool one. I love that one. That was. Um, tell me what maybe a team you'd like to see, whatever the case may be, and give your opinion on why I return for everything in the comment section because I always talk to everybody in the land, don't you know? It's my favorite part. It's why I do these videos because I love talking hockey. Have a great day, everybody. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports and the teams involved with those sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, bye.